When trying to lose fat, most people immediately start jogging or running to get into shape. But there is a major problem with that approach if you're trying to maintain muscle. And this is true for men and women. Even if you don't want big muscles, after age 50, muscle loss speeds up dramatically. And since muscle mass is linked to longevity, preserving it becomes essential if you want to stay strong and live long. You're in the right place if you want to lose some of those extra pounds, but you also want to look great in the process, not just get skinny. It's not the 90s anymore. I'm an NCAA champion athlete and a high school state champ wrestler, and so I've been through some grueling fat loss routines. And as someone who still trains seriously, I now approach everything with a mindset that promotes sustainability, longevity, and fitness virtue. So today, I'm gonna help you make prudent fitness decisions. I am going to cover six science-backed reasons why I walk to burn fat and why I don't run when I'm trying to lose fat and stay fit. And you're gonna wanna make sure you catch all of the points in this video because missing even one of them can derail your entire progress, especially the last point. So let's start with what I think is one of the most misunderstood topics in fat loss, stress hormone. Fact number one, running spikes cortisol, walking doesn't. What you don't see, but what's actually happening, is a hormonal cascade that starts when you push your cardio intensity too high. Your body releases cortisol, the stress hormone. And here's the kicker, cortisol is catabolic, meaning it breaks down tissue. And that includes fat, but also includes muscle. So what does walking do? Walking keeps you in a low stress, high recovery state. And walking's effect on cortisol barely moves the needle. That's how you lose fat without cannibalizing the very thing that makes you look strong muscle mass. Fact number two, walking supports a healthy testosterone level. Long runs can suppress it. Here's a hormone that's crucial for muscle maintenance, testosterone. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I've never heard of testosterone. What's testosterone? Testosterone plays a vital role in building muscle, recovery, and overall vitality. And maintaining optimal levels is essential, especially when you're aiming to lose fat but maintain muscle. But here's the catch. Long duration endurance running can negatively impact testosterone levels. Studies have shown that prolonged endurance exercises can raise cortisol and simultaneously decrease testosterone. One study on marathon runners showed that post-race, testosterone levels decline sharply and remain suppressed for two days. On the other hand, walking appears to have a positive correlation with testosterone levels. One study found that men who walked more than 4,000 steps a day had significantly lower odds of low testosterone compared to those who took less than 4,000 steps. And for every 1,000 steps they walked above 4,000, testosterone levels increased. This suggests that incorporating walking into your regular routine can help maintain healthy testosterone levels, supporting muscle preservation during a fat loss phase. So choosing walking over high intensity running is a prudent strategy to safeguard your hormonal health and muscle mass. Fact number three, running interferes with muscle growth. Let's say you're on a good strength training program. You're eating in a calorie deficit, but you're keeping protein high. Now you add in three to five runs per week to speed up the fat loss, what happens? Lifts stall, recovery crashes, sleep quality dips, motivation drops. <laughs> Is that all? That's the interference effect in action. It's when endurance training interferes with your body's adaptation to strength work. But what about walking? Walking has no effect at all. One meta-analysis found that walking has no measurable negative effect on muscle growth or strength gains. Why? Because walking doesn't demand the same recovery. It doesn't send a competition signal. It works with your strength training and not against it. You could walk five days a week and still keep progressing in the gym. Now that's a prudent strategy that supports and not suppresses your goal. Fact number four, running causes more muscle damage than walking. So here's one point people rarely consider, tissue damage. Running, especially downhill or on hard surfaces, creates a lot of stress. Every foot strike sends shock waves through your heel, your knees, and your hips. This causes inflammation, soreness, and muscle damage. This matters because recovery is a finite resource. You're already strength training, you're already dieting, you're in a calorie deficit, and then you add high impact trauma when you don't really have to. Walking keeps the damage low, the blood flow high, and the recovery available for the stuff that builds your body. That's why walking is more than just a low intensity cardio. It's a recovery tool, a muscle preserving weapon. And as the prudent choice, it is a virtue cultivator. Fact number five, walking burns fat, running burns carbs and muscle. Here's a question. What fuel source do you want your body to burn 
during cardio? Everybody knows the answer is fat. But guess what your body burns when you run? Carbs, and if you're in a calorie deficit, muscle. Your body chooses the fuel based on the intensity. At low intensity, like walking at a brisk pace, you're working in the fat oxidation zone. And guess what? The sweet spot is exactly where brisk walking lives. Jogging goes past it. Running blows right by it. And even worse, in a calorie deficit, if you run out of carbs and you keep pushing the pace, your body starts breaking down amino acids from your muscle tissue to maintain blood sugar. Walking keeps you in the zone where fat is burned first and muscle is spared. So walking doesn't give you a runner's high, but it gets the job done better. And the last fact, fact number six. Do you know what is the best ability? availability. Walking minimizes injury risk, keeping you in the game. Consistency is key when it comes to losing fat and building muscle. However, injuries can derail your training, putting you back onto the couch where you're going to have a hard time losing that fat. Running especially long distance running, carries a higher risk of musculoskeletal injury. In contrast, walking is a low impact activity with a very low risk of injury. The reduced mechanical stress on joints and muscles makes walking a much safer option for maintaining consistent physical activity, allowing you to stay on track with your strength training and your fat loss goals. So let's bring it all together. Running spikes cortisol and breaks down muscle. Walking keeps you in a fat burning, muscle preserving state. Walking supports healthy testosterone levels. Long runs can suppress it. Running competes with your strength training. Walking complements it. Running causes significant tissue damage. Walking is low impact and recovery friendly. Running burns carbs and amino acids. Walking burns fat directly. Walking minimizes injury risk, keeping you consistent in your training. When you're in a fat loss phase and muscle retention is the goal, walking is the smartest tool you can use. So if you learned something today, do me a big favor and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more deep dives like this and heavy doses of fitness prudence. And if if you want early access to some awesome products and services I have coming up for you down the road, just sign up for my newsletter down below. I want to know how many steps is your maximum steps in a single day? Leave it in the comments below. On my previous video, I asked this question and I got all kinds of responses. Someone said they worked in retail during Christmas. Some guy said he had to mow the lawn twice because the grass was so tall. It doubled his steps. But the winner was a man working as a garbage collector. He hit 70,000 steps in a day. Like, wow. All right, so either go hard or go home, but either way, do it walking. <laughs>